Hey guys, it's Rick Nockvi here with Presonus Audio. I'm here at Full Compass today showing the Studio Live Series 3 ecosystem of products. So the Studio Live mixers have been shipping for a while now, but now we've rolled out a complete line of components that work together. So you've got the console, the rack mixer, the NSB stage boxes, the Earmix personal monitoring system, and of course, the whole suite of software that comes in the box to basically give you a great system for both live mixing and for recording. So first of all, let's take a look at probably the most important component, and that's the console workflow. Let's take a look. The Studio Live mixers come in three different frame sizes. We've got a 16, a 24, and a 32. Now, one of the things that people really love about these mixers is the fact that they have a one-to-one -one workflow. What that means is, is that if it's a 16-channel console, it has 16 faders plus a master fader, so 17 faders. If it's a 32-channel console, 32 faders plus a master fader. So basically, every channel has its own fader. Uh, if you're coming from an analog background and you, you know, kind of used to that type of a workflow, we've got you covered here. So as you can see, this is the Studio Live 24. And we've got 24 faders plus the master fader. So every channel has its own fader. If you're somebody that doesn't really like working with a lot of flipping and going in between banks and layers and stuff like that, this is a really, really great workflow because, for example, channel 22 will always be channel 22. But we also have a split type of workflow. So what that means is, okay, I've got the one-to-one -one here, but let's say I want to look at my aux inputs. If I hit this button right here to the right of the master fader, the aux inputs button. Now all of a sudden I've got my effects returns, my aux inputs on the eight channels that are right of the master fader. If I want to look at my DCA groups, for example, hit the DCA groups button. Now these are controlling my different DCA groups. So you can see I've created a couple of DCA groups uh, for drums, vocals, that kind of a thing. The last button is your mix and effects master buttons. These faders become your aux master sends right here. And if you want to go to the next eight channels. You just hit the next button right here, and now here's 9 through 16 right here. Now, at any time, if you want to go back to a one-to-one -one type of a workflow, just hit this button one more time, and now we've got channels 1 through 24. So one of the things that I love about the Studio Live Series 3 mixers is the fact that we have a custom user layer. And what that means is, is basically, I can assign whatever channel I want to whatever fader in whatever order. Now, I'll just give you an example of kind of an application. Uh, years ago, my wife was the secretary at our church. And, um, you know, even though we had a sound guy that mixed on Sunday mornings, whenever there was a wedding or a funeral in the church, guess who got to mix sound for the wedding or funeral? My wife, right? And, you know, can you imagine a volunteer or somebody that's not technical walking up to a console with tons of faders and buttons is really, really intimidating. So what we can do with the custom user layer is we can basically only show the channels that we want that user to see. So it, it can be very simple. Let me show you how that works. So all we have to do is hit the user button, and now you can see everything is blank. So let's say channel one, if I wanted that to be a podium mic, if I hit the select button on channel one, right here in the screen, you can see all of the options of what I can have that fader one as. So let's say if, if the podium mic was on channel seven, I just hit channel seven, now it appears right here. Let's say we had a handheld mic that was coming from channel 14, I want it to be the next fader. Hit select, scroll down to channel 14. Let's say maybe we had some backing music coming from like, you know, an iPod or a CD player that that person needs to access. We can scroll down, here's the tape in, that's the third fader. When you're done, hit done, and look at this. Now all you have to look at is basically three channels on this board and you have control over those and nothing else. Really cool. So just like that, I've assigned three channels and that's all that's visible currently. So really, right here, I could assign any input channel, any output channel, an aux send, a effects return, an effects send in any order to the top layer of the board. And at any time, if I wanna go back to mixing one-to-one, -one, just hit the inputs button, wabam, we're back to mixing one-to-one. -one. The Studio Live Series 3 mixers have a ton of DSP. Now, what is DSP? Digital signal processing. What that means is that on any channel, I can have a compressor, a gate, an EQ, and a limiter. But we didn't just stop there. We have different physical analog models of vintage compressors and EQs available. So let's take a look. 
This blue section in the middle of the console is called the fat channel. And essentially what that is, is it's all of your EQ and dynamics processing for any selected channel. So if I select channel 13, here's all of the EQ, gate, compressor, limiter for that channel 13. If I select channel 16, you can see now I've got a separate set of settings for that channel. Now, one of the cool features on the Studio Live mixers is this AB switch. And what that does is it allows you to set up two completely different fat channels per channel. So as an example, let's say channel 14, I've got a guitar player and he's going to switch from a, a Strat to a Les Paul in the middle of the gig. So what I want to do is I want to set up a setting for his Strat and then a setting for his Les Paul. So I hit the EQ. Let's say the Strat's kind of bright, so you know we might want to boost some lows, maybe roll off a few highs, maybe a little bit of mid-range, and then I'll have him Try the Les Paul at soundcheck. I'll hit the AB switch. Now we'll set up a fat channel for the Les Paul. And again, let's say maybe the Les Paul has a lot more low end. Maybe it needs to be brighter, a little bit more mid-range. Okay, so, and of course, I can go in and set up a totally separate compressor setting for the Les Paul as well. But then during the gig, when he switches guitars, instead of me having to fumble around and you know, load in presets. All I have to do is on that channel, just select the guitar channel on channel 14 and hit AB. And so that just toggles between those two different sounds. So every single channel on the Studio Live mixer has two completely independent fat channel settings stored in memory. So essentially all you have is an A and a B setting, and then you can access those immediately. Now, one of the things that we did recently that is really cool is we added a lot of analog modeled vintage compressor and EQ kind of uh, sounds. So, you know, when you buy the console, you get the standard fully parametric four band EQ, but you also can choose from, let's say, you know, a, a vintage kind of tube passive EQ as well as uh, a vintage, more British sounding EQ. Same thing on the compressor. You have the standard, very transparent digital compressor, and then you also have uh, a tube style compressor and a FET style compressor. Now, one of the newest things that we've introduced is new modeled EQ and dynamics processors that you can purchase after the fact to enhance your mixer. So some of the new ones that we've uh, done that are available We've got this new Brit Comp, which is really amazing. Classic Compressor is also another new one that's available. And, you know, every single parameter is modeled from, you know, every circuit, every transformer. It's um, a really, really amazing sound. And so just some of the different ones. Uh, there's a really nice Comp 160 here, Everest 100A, which is a kind of an optical sound. Um, the FC670, another vintage compressor, and this one's called the Tube. Same thing with the EQs. Of course, you get three um, vintage, uh, the passive and the standard EQ when you buy the console, but some of the new models that we have have available, we've got the Alpine 550, Baxendahl EQ, Solar 69, which is also from a vintage console, um, Tube EQ, and the Vintage 3 Band. And there's also some brand new emulations of Personas products that we've now given for free when you buy a console, just for registering the console. Thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to see more, check out our other GearCast videos on the Studio Live Series 3 ecosystem at fullcompass.com.